Hey guys, today we'll be taking a look at the latest polls that have been released for the 2024 presidential election. As we head into 2022, we'll start seeing some campaign announcements start to come out, and especially after the midterm elections in 2023, we'll be seeing a lot more of those campaign announcements uh, coming from both parties. Now, one thing that I think is definitely very interesting about the 2024 election in particular is that both the Democratic and Republican parties have a clear front runner for their party's respective nominations. For the Democratic Party, Joe Biden is, of course, the front runner for his nomination in 2024, as the incumbent president typically is for their re-elections. Joe Biden currently has a 38% chance of winning that nomination. This would typically be a lot higher, of course, if Joe Biden was not the oldest president in history. If he would have won his second term, he would be 86 years old by the time he finishes his second presidential term in 2029. And so for Joe Biden, I mean, he is by far the oldest president in American history. Um, the second oldest president ever was Ronald Reagan after serving his second term. Trump, of course, did get inaugurated uh, at an older age than Ronald Reagan, but of course, Trump lost his re-election. So uh, Joe Biden would be eight years older than the oldest a president has ever been before him um, after a second term. So age really is the only factor that is, he's, it is a main factor that is inhibiting Joe Biden from running for re-election. If he does decide to run, he will, of course, win his party's nomination. The Democratic Party is not going to try to replace uh, their incumbent president that just defeated Donald Trump. So um, Joe Biden, if he does run, he will win the nomination. Um, other major candidates are Kamala Harris and Pete Buttigieg. Um, Elizabeth Warren is not going to run in 2024, realistically. Bernie Sanders is not going to run. He is even older than Joe Biden. Um, and Bernie Sanders is running for a first term um, at the age of, I believe, 82, 83. Um, is just not going to happen. Hillary Clinton will never win um, the nomination of the Democratic Party, and nor uh, will AOC most likely in 2024. I don't think she will run. I think she will wait a little bit longer. So as of right now, Joe Biden is the clear front runner with, Pete Buttigieg, uh, with the chances for Pete Buttigieg um, having increased recently as um, a candidate start to position themselves well for 2024. For the Republican Party, we of course have a clear front runner here as well with Donald Trump. And again, I think we, you know, he's in a similar scenario with Joe Biden. Uh, he will be running for a second non consecutive term, and only one president in American history has ever successfully done that, and that was Grover Cleveland um, in the 1800s. So it'll be very difficult, I think, for Joe Biden or for Donald Trump to win a second non consecutive term um, being split uh, by Joe Biden's one term. So uh, uh, for Donald Trump, he currently has a 40% chance. I think that age definitely will be a major factor as well. He is only one year younger than Joe Biden, so he would be 85 by the time that he finishes serving his second term as well. So um, definitely age is going to be a big deal in this race in deciding whether or not these two frontrunners run in 2024. Um, but Donald Trump is followed by Ron DeSantis and Nikki Haley, who was the frontrunner before Donald Trump uh, lost the 2020 presidential election. So before that, Nikki Haley was was widely expected to be the 2024 nominee. Um, however, after, um, you know, distancing herself from Trump after the insurrection at the Capitol and the election lies, um, Nikki Haley is no longer uh, one of the major players for 2024, um, but she still does rank in third place currently because there just really aren't too many um, candidates with a high chance of winning this nomination at all. So taking a look at the latest polls that have been released for 2024, so here you can see um, the potential 2024 Democratic candidates. I think that these are currently the three major candidates, uh, the three major potential candidates who who are, of course, Joe Biden, Pete Buttigieg, and Kamala Harris. Um, for the GOP, we have Chris Christie, um, Ted Cruz, Matt Gates, who is not going to win the nomination um, after a scandal. So Matt Gates definitely um, is not going to run in 2024. I don't think so anymore. Um, Francis Suarez, the mayor of Miami, um, don't think he's going to be too important in the race. But Donald Trump, definitely a major player. Ted Cruz, I think, um, could put up an interesting fight against Trump again after coming in second in 2016. But again, uh, many of these Republicans, I mean, I can promise you, Nikki Haley even said this herself, uh, a huge majority of these candidates are not going to run if Donald Trump runs. If he runs, um, it, is, it is very, very unlikely for any of these candidates to challenge him. It would be political suicide for them. So um, really, if Trump runs, he's really not going to face too much opposition, not any significant opposition, at least from the Republican Party. We also have a long list of potential Republican candidates, Greg Abbott, Ron DeSantis, of course, um, Marjorie Taylor Greene, Nikki Haley, um, 
um, Adam Kinzinger, who has announced that he will not be running for re-election for his House seat in 2022. Um, Mike Pence, of course, will be a major player as well if he does decide um, to run, because he is still the former vice president, which will always make him a major candidate. Um, Chris Nunu, of course, of the state of New Hampshire is also um, not, probably not going to run as well. Uh, we have Donald Trump Jr. and Glenn Youngkin, who, of course, just won the Virginia Senate race or governor's race, which is why um, he will, you know, he will remain um, in the spotlight for a little bit. Um, but, you know, I, I don't think he's going to run, um, you know, right after winning his first term as governor, especially since he's had no previous experience in politics. So um, looking at the primary for the Democratic Party here, so looking at the polls, with Joe Biden. Of course, Joe Biden leads in every single poll that has been released. However, um, his numbers have been dropping since the beginning of the year. Um, latest polls show him for at around 20 to 40 percent. Um, he reached a peak here at 83% at one point. So uh, Joe Biden's polling numbers definitely are not the best, but still he is going to get the support of the Democratic Party if he does decide to run um, in 2024. That really is not in question. Um, we also have many polls that were released without Joe Biden in them. So Kamala Harris right now is a front runner. Um, she leads in every single poll where Joe Biden is not included. Michelle Obama has um, led in polls previously before the inauguration of Joe Biden, but Michelle Obama, she is not going to be the Democratic Democratic nominee. She is not going to run for president. She has said that many, many times, um, and she has not shown any signs of being interested in a potential 2024 run. There was one poll where Andrew Cuomo actually led, um, but of course that is no longer going to happen. Uh, but he's no longer even the governor of New York. So Kamala Harris right now is the clear front runner, um, but I think that Pete Buttigieg will probably be her main opponent um, if both these two decide to run. And Kamala Harris definitely, she does not have a firm grasp on the Democratic Party. Um, if you look at her approval rating currently, I mean, it is literally at 36.9%. That is a little bit, little bit uh, misleading because there really have not been too many polls released. But her approval rating has consistently been worse than Joe Biden's. Um, and she has consistently been one of the least popular politicians in the country. So uh, it will be very difficult for Kamala Harris. I think both, even, even within her own party um, and within you know the national level um, as well. So it will be very difficult for Kamala Kamala Harris, but for the GOP here, uh, Donald Trump, of course, the clear frontrunner for the 2024 nomination, often leading in these polls with 50 to 60 percent of the vote. He seems to be averaging at around 55, 56 percentage points. Um, he is typically followed by either Ron DeSantis or Mike Pence, uh, who, of course, are the governor of Florida and the former vice president. So both of these two candidates are the really the major players right now, with the exception of Donald Trump. Now, of course, there were many polls released also. Also, with Donald Trump not included um, in them. And for these polls, Ron DeSantis and Mike Pence seem to be the leaders. Just looking at the numbers here, Ron DeSantis does lead in most of these polls that have been released, uh, with typically around 20 to 40% averaging at around 25 uh, to 30 percent. For Mike Pence, there are a couple of polls in which he does lead. Um, you know, there's a couple of them, but mo most of the polls do show Ron DeSantis in the lead. Um, but definitely, it is clear that Ron DeSantis, Mike Pence, these are the two major candidates uh, for the GOP, with the exception of Donald Trump in 2024 for the Republican Party's nomination. Um, and looking at uh, the numbers here for the state of Georgia. Um, we have some statewide polling for their party's nominations here for the GOP. Um, Donald Trump, you know, does very well in Georgia right now. Um, in the state of Maine, of course, Mike Pence is actually the leader, but Donald Trump is not in this poll. This was conducted before the 2020 election. We have a poll from North Carolina as well as South Carolina. This was conducted after Trump's loss, showing him with 64% of support within the South Carolina primary, which is um, definitely very, very high up there. Um, and then looking at the general election polling here between Joe Biden and Donald Trump, you will see that in the past, Joe Biden did lead in most of these polls during the beginning of his presidency when he was most popular. Joe Biden remained in the positives for a very, very long time. If you do look at his approval rating at one point, it was very close to Barack Obama's approval um, around 200 days, 180 days into his presidency. But after Afghanistan in the month of August, after everything that happened, happened um, in the very unsuccessful 
um, removal of troops from the country. Um, Joe Biden's approval has plummeted down to basically its lowest point ever at around 42, 43 um, percent. This is still more popular than Donald Trump at this time. Um, and it, it is around Donald Trump's approval throughout most of his presidency. But Joe Biden's approval is still slightly higher um, than what we've seen uh, from Donald Trump during his um, presidency uh, for those four years. Uh, and, you know, compared to presidents of the past, Joe Biden um, is clearly, uh, you know, a lot lower. Um, you know, it's comparable to Clinton, who is able to save his presidency uh, and his reelection within those first four years. So Joe Biden does have a chance, but with how unflexible voters have been, um, I think it will be very difficult uh, for the incumbent president to try to win back the support of voters, which he clearly has lost here. Uh, if you look at Donald Trump's current favorability, it is at around 41.6%, so it is still lower than Joe Biden's, but... I mean, definitely for Donald Trump, he's no longer in office, which will inflate his numbers a little bit. Um, it is a lot higher than his numbers during his presidency because he no longer has any responsibility um, on what is happening in the country. So for 2024, many of the latest polls do show either a tie or Donald Trump actually leading, which is very, very bad news for Joe Biden in 2024. If you look at the 2020 numbers, I mean, Joe Biden led by an average of 7.2% in all polls released uh, coming into the 2024 presidential election. I mean, he did win the popular vote in the end by a margin of 45 uh, for a 4.5%. Um, the polls are very, very um, close to Joe Biden's numbers here. As you can see, um, this is something that we, that we saw in 2016 a lot, something that I talked about a lot during the 2020 season. Uh, and that is the fact that Joe Biden really did not win over any of the undecided voters in these polls. These undecided voters always tended to go to Donald Trump. If you look at Joe Biden's polling average, 51.2, he ended up winning 51.4. If you look at Trump's average, 44%, he won almost 47% of the vote. So definitely the undecided voters uh, in these polls definitely do do better for Donald Trump. And if you look at the 2020 numbers since the primary began between Joe Biden and Donald Trump, which was around the beginning of the month of March when Joe Biden swept Super Tuesday. Um, you will see that throughout the entire 2020 election cycle, Joe Biden led by a pretty extensive margin. The smallest margin he ever had was in the month of May, where he led by 4.4%. The largest margin, 10.2% on average in favor of the current president. I mean, at the end, he led by 7.2%, which was you know a very average margin for Joe Biden throughout the 2020 cycle. If you look at the polls, I mean, Donald Trump led in one poll since the election cycle began. Since the month of uh, March in 2020, Donald Trump led in just one poll um, by Rasmussen Reports, which of course is a right-leaning pollster. And if you look at you know the 2020 to 2024 numbers, Donald Trump already leads in a significant number uh, of these polls um, against Joe Biden. So definitely not good for him. Um, Andrew Yang, who is starting his own political party, uh, the Ford uh, Party, um, as you can see, five uh, percent there. Um, this is just a hypothetical poll with Andrew Yang in there. Um, Ron DeSantis does trail Joe Biden in every single poll released by pretty extensive margins. Uh, Nikki Haley, 19% to Joe Biden's 44 um, against Ted Cruz, 24 for Ted Cruz, 46 for Joe Biden. An Emerson poll between Joe Biden and Mitt Romney. Um, Joe Biden almost doubles Mitt Romney's vote share. But between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump, Donald Trump clearly sweeps all of these polls. Um, so definitely not good for the vice president. I think that Kamala Harris um, is nowhere close to Al Gore um, in terms of how important he is, uh, to, uh, you know, how important they were to their presidents uh, with Kamala Harris to Joe Biden and Al Gore, of course, to Bill Clinton. I mean, Al Gore uh, was able to win the 2000 Democratic nomination, you know, pretty easily. But 2024 for Kamala Harris, even if Joe Biden does not run, I think will definitely be a struggle for her because she she is nowhere near as popular as Gore was in 2000. Uh, for Kamala Harris uh, against Mike Pence, Kamala Harris does lead in the poll released in June, which was quite a while ago. Um, against Ron DeSantis, as you can see here, um, Ron DeSantis does lead in the latest poll release between the two. Um, she ha even manages to tie with Mike Pompeo, the former Secretary of State, 
uh, under Donald Trump and against Tim Scott. Tim Scott uh, of Florida, the recently elected senator in 2018, was even able to defeat Kamala Harris. So looking at the 2024 polls, definitely not the best numbers for the Democratic Party. And this is the nationwide trend um, that you're seeing. It will be a lot easier for the GOP to coalesce around Donald Trump uh, or a candidate like Ron DeSantis for 2024 than it will be for the Democratic Party to decide on their nominee, you know, whether it be Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, or Pete Buttigieg. I think that Pete Buttigieg and Kamala Harris would be two terrible choices for the Democratic Party. Both of these candidates are not candidates that I think are able to win. I think that both of them uh, will perform very poorly on a national level. And just within their parties themselves, I mean, I don't think that they will be able to get voters to be enthusiastic. I mean, Kamala Harris, um, just looking at the way she campaigns, I mean, it is not... Um, it is not great to watch. She really is not able to rile up voters in ways that, you know, Trump and many Republicans are able to. Um, you know, Joe Biden, I think, even does a lot better job than Kamala Harris, even though he seems confused um, a lot of the time. Uh, Pete Buttigieg, he is not going to be able to win over many voters, um, especially independents and conservatives. Uh, I think that he is um, a little bit too progressive in the eyes of many. Um, and I think that it will be very difficult for, um, you know, the country to elect him. Um, on the national level within the Democratic Party. Um, I think he definitely has a very good chance as shown, you know, by just how well he did, how surprisingly well he did in the 2020 Democratic primary before he reached, you know, states like Nevada and South Carolina. But Joe Biden, I still think he is the best nominee for right now, um, but definitely not where he wants to be. Right now in 2024, if the election were held today, um, I do think that Joe Biden is not really in the best position to win uh, at all. Um, and then looking at, I mean, just his approval, you do see that there is a big issue right now for the Democratic Party um, and they really need to get these numbers up this is not you know where Joe Biden wants to be he, his approval will likely go up before 2024 um, but you know just look and it's you know very unlikely to go down even more um, but definitely when you have a majority of the country who disapproves of the job you're doing um, it will be very difficult for him to, you know and his own party to win in both 2022 and 2024 and you already saw the effects um, which were shown in the 2021 um, elections now for these head to head polls between Trump and Biden, you will see there's, you know, many, many more polls here on 538. You'll see some polls between Biden and Trump in specific states like Iowa, 14 percent. Um, and the Rust Belt, I think, again, will play a major role in 2024. Um, you have polls between Harris uh, and many of these prospective um, GOP nominees, Joe Biden against them as well um, in Florida, where. Uh, Joe Biden actually leads both Ron DeSantis and Trump by the same margin of 2%. Polls out of Missouri solid for Donald Trump. Uh, this plus 10 poll in the state of Florida for Joe Biden against Ron DeSantis, who is the governor of the state, which I did find to be pretty surprising. And you have many other polls uh, that you can look at here. Uh, but looking at, you know, the 2020 electoral map, uh, I think that it definitely will be difficult for Joe Biden in his reelection because of how narrowly he won many of these states. Looking at this map, he can sacrifice both Georgia and Arizona, but he must win these three upper Rust Belt states. Um, the Rust Belt in 2000. 2012 looked like this. In 2008, it was completely controlled by the Democratic Party. Obama even won the state of Indiana by 1%. 2012, Indiana goes to Romney by 10%. Uh, he still wins the entire Rust Belt by pretty comfortable margins, nowhere close in these other states. Um, but in 2008, I mean, he won Michigan by 16%, Pennsylvania by 10 Wisconsin by 14 um, In 2016, it's all gone. The Democratic Party's blue wall in the Rust Belt has completely disappeared. Um, in 2020, Joe Biden is able to build it back, um, but by very, very small margins. So um, the Democratic Party, they need to keep control of the Rust Belt belt, which is continuously shifting to the right. Um, you know, this area used to be dominated by the Democratic Party. I mean, look at 2004, 2000, 1996, 1992. I mean, the Rust Belt was controlled by the Democratic Party. The last time that the GOP really were, was able to win in these states was 1988 with the election of George H. W. Bush before Donald Trump. Um, so in 2020, Joe Biden will have to both hold on to the Rust Belt as well as maintaining their recent wins in the Sun Belt with Arizona and Georgia. Um, you know, North Carolina being another state that the Democratic Party has worked very hard for, but has been unable to be successful. And Texas is not going to flip um, in 2024. But for both of these states, Arizona and Georgia, it is going to be the crucial that the Democratic Party holds on to them um, going into the next election. So these were the latest numbers that have been released for the 2024 race. I think it will be a very interesting one, um, especially after the 2020 election. And I think that the fact that we have two, uh, you know, the two candidates in the previous election being the front runners for the next election, I think that will be 
be pretty um, exciting to watch a rematch if that does occur. But it, it is my opinion right now that I don't think we'll see Joe Biden run against Donald Trump. I think that there's a pretty good chance that at least one of these two candidates ends up on the ballot again in 2024. But I think that it will be very unlikely that both of these, due to their age, um, will both be running for re-election in 2024. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure you like it down below if you enjoyed it. Comment down below who you think the two parties nominees will be, as well as who you think would win in a general election scenario. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't. Again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.